Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you how to EQ toms in just three simple steps. We're gonna be working on toms today, more specifically tom EQ, but before we dive in, if you are looking to dial in a repeatable workflow for cranking out professional sounding drum mixes, then I want you to go through my three-step framework for mixing drums workshop. This workshop is gonna walk you through the three-step process that I go through on almost every single one of my mixes to help you get professional sounding drum mixes right from your home studio. It is a 100% free to watch on-demand video training and you can get access to that by clicking the link below in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at these toms. Of course, let me start by playing you the finished mix as a whole here, and then I'll solo up just the drums, and then we'll go a level deeper, and we'll solo up just the toms. This is the bridge section for this for this, for this this song, excuse me, uh, and it's made up of uh, kind of a nice tom fill groove on the drums, so it's a good section to use to get an idea of what our toms are sounding like. So let me get my mic up here so I can mute it so everything's not bleeding through here. Here is our finished mix for this song. So you can hear, first of all, um, one of the things you want to do on toms, or you don't have to, it's not something you have to do, uh, but for me it really cleans up the drum mix is when you edit out all of the science silence. So if I zoom in the audio here, you can see the bleed's left in while the toms are going, and then once the tom fills stop, the bleed is cut out, and then we fade back in for a tom fill and fade back out afterwards. It's much cleaner to me than using something like a gate because gates can get pretty messy sounding and I don't want them to chop off any of the smaller tom hits or any kind of ghost notes or anything like that. And sometimes they, they close too quickly and then you have weird cymbal cuts. I don't want to deal with any of that, so I go through before I do my mixing and I edit out all of the silence on tom. So that's just a precursor to this here. Let's jump into the tom EQ. So three steps to EQing your toms here. You can probably see what the three steps are here. Let me turn off all of our moves here. Step number one is gonna be getting rid of the information that we don't need on our tom. So that's gonna be two moves here. Move number one is rolling off all of the sub area that we don't need. That makes sure that anything in between the toms stays pretty clean and any of the lower toms don't ring louder than the higher toms. This gives us a good balance between all of the toms as we roll around because as you can see, we're EQing on the bus here. So all four toms, there's no processing going on on those individually. They are sending to the Tom bus here and we're doing our processing on the bus. So we wanna get a good balance EQ wise. You can see there's already balance frequent or balance volume wise. Now we're gonna try and balance frequency wise. So take a listen here as I AB the high pass filter. We're up at about 70 Hertz here. So right below the fundamental of our lowest Tom. You can see our lowest Tom is gonna to be sitting right around this 80 Hertz area right here. So this does a couple things. It evens out the tone of our toms. So from the high tom to the low tom, everything feels a little bit more balanced. We don't blow up when we hit the lower tom there. But it also makes sure everything isn't ringing all the way through. We can get a lot of ringing going on in the sub area with toms, especially with fills like this where you hit and he goes through and hits every tom here. 
We don't want all of that to build up in our sub area and then ring through our mix or just our drum mix in general. So the high pass filter is really gonna help to clean all that up. Now, going still with step number one here, getting rid of information we don't need, we don't need a lot of mid-range on toms here. We need our lows and we need our highs to cut through the mix. All of this low mid area, we don't need any of that. And the same way we worked in the low end, right? Because we have tom fills that go across here and he's hitting every tom, we don't want this low mid information to build up and then ring through the mix. We don't want just, just this big, huge chunk of low mid information taken over our toms. We're gonna pull this out, make room for our bottom end, make room for our top end here. So take a listen without uh, and then with this cut, and I'll also boost up so you can hear the frequency range that we're cutting here on the toms. So for me, this is that frequency range that kind of gives you that woody sort of sound. Um, it kind of makes the drums feel like they thud in the low mid area and it makes it feel like there's not enough bottom end and not enough top end. It's just kind of this middle range frequency, like putting a blanket over your drum. It just makes it really feel really dull and really thuddy sounding. So pulling this out really cleans up the drum and leaves room for the bottom end and the top end to shine. Listen one more time without this cut and then with it. Clears up the drum sound overall and makes it feel a little bit thicker in the bottom end and leaves room for the top end stick attack on the drum. Now, step number two is where we go and get our bottom end in place here. So I'm at 80 hertz, I'm boosting at the lowest possible note here. So that's the floor tom, the fundamental on our floor tom is sitting around the 80 hertz here. So what this does is it doesn't pull up everything in general, it pulls up the lowest note here and then we have the nice curve on the back end that pulls up a little bit less of each drum as we get higher and higher because we don't need a lot of bottom end, a lot of sub area on the highest tom, right? We need less and less with each tom as we get higher and higher. So we're boosting at the lowest tom and then letting uh, the return curve here get smaller and smaller so we boost less and less bottom end as we go towards the high tom here. And we also have our high pass filter help us, helping us out here, making sure we're not bringing up too much of the sub area that we already removed here. So take a listen without, and then I'll put this boost in. You can hear how we get that little bit of thickness, little bit of warmth on the bottom tom. It's just a dB and a half boost here at 80 hertz, but it's just enough to make our toms feel big and to make them feel powerful when we sit them inside the mix. So it'll it'll sit nicely with our kick drum. I always like to think the toms are like mini kick drums, right? You want them to have good low end power and good top end attack. So I like them to sit nicely alongside the kick drum and, and the snare drum as well as we're rolling through uh, different fills here. So that's our bottom end, that's step number two. Step number one is getting rid of what we don't need. So our high pass filter and then cutting all this muddiness, that thickness, that heavy sort of sound here in the low mid area. That was at 324 Hertz. That was a 6 dB cut. And then step number two is boosting our low end. So getting that warmth and getting that low end power that we need on our toms to make them feel big. That's a half, a dB and a half boost at 80 Hertz here. Last thing here, step number three, is emphasizing that stick attack up on the top end. This helps our toms cut through the mix and helps them sit more balanced with something like our snare drum. So as he rolls through and hits on our snare drum at the end, our toms are gonna sit nice and evenly uh, in that fill here. So we're at 3.6K, anywhere from like 3K up to 5K, usually around 4K is where I'm boosting to get the stick attack on toms, especially on tom fills here. 
So we're doing almost 5 dB here, 4.8 dB at 3.6. So take a listen. This is going to emphasize the top end stick attack to help our drums feel a little bit more present inside the mix without the boost and then with the boost here, uh, just the toms. So this balances out our toms overall frequency wise, right? We go from just having that low end power to suddenly we have power up on the top end too on that stick attack. It makes it feel like he's hitting the drum a little bit harder, which is what you want to make your toms feel big. We've got the low end power. We've got that top end power now. Let's listen all together and I'll AB the EQ here on our toms. So let's throw our toms back in the mix here and we'll do one final AB overall here in the track. Three simple EQ steps here to get your toms big, to get them powerful inside your mix. Getting rid of what we don't need is step number one. So high pass filter, rolling off that extra sub, and then getting rid of that low mid muddiness. Step number two, that's where we get our low end power, right? So boosting at the fundamental of the lowest tom, so we get less and less as each tom gets higher and higher. And then step number three, getting that high end stick attack to make our toms cut through the mix. I hope this was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your drum mixes to the next level and really get your drums sounding professional from your home studio, then you need to go through my three-step framework for mixing drums workshop. Completely free workshop for you and you can get access to that by clicking the link below in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.